I'm a professor and the interim department chair in nutrition and health sciences. Uh, as a professor in the department, I'm a teacher and a researcher. Uh, the area that I research is in nutrient metabolism and uh, the relationships between diet and health and disease. So specifically, I focus on the dietary contributions to cholesterol and heart disease. F food scarcity, uh, perhaps in, this, in its simplest definition, would just be the uh, insufficient availability of food to support life and, and to thrive. But it can be interpreted in maybe different ways. So uh, a more complete definition might, um, might be uh, stated in terms of food production or food distribution or perhaps uh, uh, cost and, and affordability every nation is responsible for their own policies. And there, um, there is an organization which is a uh, agency of, of the United Nations, which is the Food and Agriculture Organization. And the, the focus of that organization uh, is to uh, draw attention to the issues of, of agriculture and, and food scarcity would certainly be one of them. And um, its main goal really is to reduce the level of hunger worldwide. Uh, the, but the FAO uh, can only act as a dispensary of, of knowledge and programs and coordinate the, the exchange of information and, and practices among nations, it really doesn't have any uh, policing kind of activities. The FAO does not create legislation. Uh, it, it can't. It can, it can only um, make rec recommendations and, and share the knowledge uh, of what's successful in one country with other countries. So. Uh, in doing that, it will create conferences and it will hold sessions throughout the year and, and get people to come together and simply talk and, and um, discuss what programs have been working, which ones aren't so successful, and that sort of thing. I'm, I'm most familiar with policies that have been created in the United States, and we um, we, we have a number of food subsidy programs that are meant to, to uh, alleviate food scarcity. And, you know, just as an example, we have the, uh, the, the school breakfast and lunch program, which is federally funded. We have the, uh, the uh, supplemental nutrition assistance program, or the food stamp program. Uh, we have the women, infants, and children, which targets a, a, a obviously a s special needy group. So, uh, people that fit a, the the low income category are certainly the target of these programs and and uh, can benefit greatly from them. Well, if there if there weren't policies, um, there are examples of developing countries around the world in which pol policies don't exist. And I think that uh, food distribution is, is a problem. Uh, just having the infrastructure, having the, the, uh, the economic structure to be able to distribute food is uh, perhaps critical to a lot of this. In the United States, we have a very well-developed uh, road system, rail system, we have a very well-developed uh, agricultural production system. And so guarding against large fluctuations in food availability is what most of these policies really target. Most countries seem to follow appropriate agriculture and economic practices which 
helps ensure that, that there's food available for their people. Um, it, uh, it certainly is and should be a priority for governments, whether they're developed countries or whether they're developing countries, that their people insu are insured to have an adequate food supply. The United States has really been a leader in nutrition research and developing and implementing nutrition programs for, for many years. And, uh, you look back over the last hundred years or so, uh, the United States was among the first in the world to draft legislation aimed at improving the food supply. Uh, in 1906, the Food and Drugs Act was adopted, and this was, um, this was the first case where laws were being developed to require that f certain standards were met. In our department, um, most of what we do focuses on the metabolic aspects of nutrition and also the nutrition education programs for the state of Nebraska. And um, to give you an idea of, of this, the impact of our nutrition education programs, last year we reached nearly 40,000 individuals in the state um, that qualified as low income. Uh, in a, in, by reaching those individuals, what, we, what I mean is that we were able to deliver programs to them that um, help them understand uh, better the, the food supply, what food is available, how to make healthy choices, how to stretch the food dollar. 